Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to my channel. If this is the first time you've come on my channel, then hi, I make beauty and lifestyle content here on YouTube. And if you enjoy that sort of content, then I think you will love your time here. So please take a moment and hit the subscribe button down below and join the Sarah squad. And also don't forget to hit the bell icon right next to it so that every time I upload a video, which is Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday, you get notified. Also, if you want to get to know me better, get a little sneak peek into my personal life and a little behind the scenes, then you can follow me on Instagram as well. My handle is Sarah. Sarosh with an extra H after Sarosh and with that let's dive into today's video today I'm taking on the trend and hopping on the boat and joining the honest youtuber tag so I've been seeing these kind of videos doing its rounds on the Indian uh, YouTube community and I think this was started in, on the Indian platform by Shweta D itself that is Shweta Vijay Nair ma'am so she started this and ever since she did her video everybody has been hopping on board and like sharing a lot from the YouTube community these are things that usually YouTubers don't talk about, content creators don't talk about but I think since we are all becoming so aware about everything it's nice to like you know come out here and talk about commercials, talk about collaborations, sponsorships and everything like you know let's be in the open and since the aesthetic of my channel has always been about honesty I always stand for honest beauty reviews, honest everything you know I stay damn true to my audience on this channel so I thought if I don't hop on this trend then I'm just going to like make my subscribers like deprive them of of quality content i'm not going to make this full of tea or like you know very gossipy or anything like that i'm just going to state facts it's not going to be negative i know when i took the questions on my community tab a lot of people told me that uh, shweta ma'am is receiving a lot of hate because of that video which i don't really understand why because everything that she said is people what people usually crave from youtubers you know that kind of transparency is what you crave so why would you abuse her and hate her and especially take a dig at her personal life because of that video that's a kind of low that honestly i hope no human achieves that kind of a low level so i have sent her a lot of love and i honestly adore her love her so much respect her so much so anyway keeping all of that aside i think i have a bunch of questions right here on my phone i have taken down about 31 32 questions so this is the time you go grab your popcorn go grab your cup of coffee because i'm going to state facts that probably everybody needs to know so i'm just addressing questions after questions i don't have the names over here because a lot of people collectively ask the same thing so the first thing is a bad experience from a fellow youtuber now personally I haven't collaborated that much uh, on my YouTube journey because simultaneously I'm also a medical student. I do my full time studies and everything, attend college and all of that. So I have never really gotten an opportunity to collaborate a lot with fellow YouTubers. I have done I think only one or two collaborations on this channel up until now. And now that I'm a part of YouTube Next Up, I do meet a lot of like fellow content creators. But so far everyone I've met is like as sweet as possible like this is exactly how you will see them virtually as well as how I know them in the real world so they are not like the people I've met are all like really really genuinely good people so no I have not had a bad experience from any fellow YouTuber as such the second question is an underrated and an overrated YouTuber. Now this is something I also addressed in my gossip and get ready with me uh, that I don't feel any creator in India is overrated because I feel like everybody who's hitting a million or even a hundred K or some milestone on YouTube has worked a lot of years to get there like it's taken Shreya Jain what eight years to get to 600 K it's taken mostly seen about four four to five years to get to one million Sejal four to five years to get to one million and cross that so it's taken them a while so they are not overrated they didn't get there overnight uh, but abroad of course I feel like a lot of creators are overhyped I genuinely feel and don't come at me that the Ace family is a little overhyped I'm being very honest here I I do watch their content I feel like I know it's a big deal to put your life out there I just feel like somewhere that their quality of content is also not like the best you know because I see so many other family vloggers and so many other Indian as well as international vloggers who do so much better with like shoot and edit and just the production of it and having that kind of subscriber base and still not amping it up even with the production and really uh, like the videos at this point have lost their meaning so I mean I just find them overrated they grow like this and uh, I don't get the hype 
Underrated YouTubers, definitely. I feel I am an underrated YouTuber. If you've not subscribed to me, this is the time, you guys. I put a lot of effort in my videos. I have amped up my production quality so much from day one up until now. Even with college and everything, I take YouTube very seriously. I create content with all my heart and soul. But of course, if you're here and you've already subscribed to my channel, some other creators that I genuinely feel are under underrated are. Himadri Patel, she's uh, at Next Up with me. I'm gonna leave all these links in the description section. She's also amazing, like her quality of content, her makeup, her everything. Like even on Instagram, she's the bomb. And uh, second person, I think would be Meghna Vegas. Like the Next Up people, these are all my Next Up fellow creators, and I genuinely feel all of them are like underrated. So you need to subscribe to like all of them: Meghna, Himadri, Latika. All of them are like you know amazing. Like I found out about their channels through Next Up, and when I went and saw their videos i was like dude why haven't they come in my recommendations before okay so the third question is the most asked i think everybody just wants to hop on board and know commercials and wants to know how much we charge as youtubers for paid sponsorships and paid collaborations so one person straight up asked me why don't youtubers tell how much money they make and i kind of got a little tipped off in the wrong way with that question because i was like uh unless you are sharing your salary slip at the end of the month on instagram or on youtube or on video i don't think youtubers really have to share their monthly or yearly income with you you know i understand that our lives are out there and we are uh talking to you all sharing with you all and like our lives are very pretty much out there but that doesn't give any viewer or any buddy for that matter an entitlement to know how much money we make i just i think it's just rude you know but if you're a new creator and there were many very many new creators who were asking me how to charge commercials and how do how to go about with a sponsored post or a sponsored video or all of that so let me just give you a brief idea about how it all works so in general if a brand reaches out to you that they want you to come on board for a campaign now if it's a campaign that is a lot of creators are doing it at the same time you know it's not just you and for that i genuinely feel you have to charge money you should not be accepting campaigns on barter basis i have made that mistake in the past and that's why any creator watching me who's new i would tell you that don't make that mistake as me i have learned it the hard way that if you're good at something if you're working hard towards something take money charge for what you're good at you know nothing for free nothing absolutely should be done for free so now how do you go about with the whole charging process you usually have like a media kit and a rate card a media kit is basically where you put in all your analytics all how your how your channel is doing your engagement how your instagram is doing basically your social media and how much you're going to benefit to the brand because at the end of the day it's like a two way deal so you need to tell the brand what you possess like number wise and give them all the demographics what kind of audience you have what kind of collaborations you've done in the past all of that is in your media kit and your rate card is a separate uh, draft which will include all your commercials so how do you go about charging for that mostly there is no specific rule of thumb that is followed in the indian influencer market at the point there is no rule of thumb that at this mark you charge this much at this mark it's just a I mean at this point there are a lot of like marketing agencies that are coming into place and this was also another question somebody asked me if I am on board with a marketing agency or a managing agency no I am not I am not a, like associated with any agency I am one sole creator I have ran the show myself all these three years but right now I do have a manager who's handling my brand deals for me so she assists me with my brand deals she helps me with all of the financial aspect of it uh you can start off alone of course like i said if you want an eyeball judgment about how much you should charge for your commercials um there are certain rules that you can follow like you can charge per rupee like 1 rupee or 50 paise per view that you get on your youtube video i'm just giving you an eyeball or another way that you can so if i'm getting like 2000 3000 average views on my video like initially when i started that was the number 1500 2000 like i'm not even initially when i started like about after a year of my videos that was the number so that was the price you know 1500 2000 for collaborations that is how you charge the brand and that is how you come up with your rate card you can also if you're amping up your production if you're amping up your effort cost like you can also charge according to the effort plus production you're putting in like how many hours are you going to give to that particular campaign and that particular video that you're doing and how much of your production like you know i use a camera worth 60000 my light is worth 11000 my laptop is worth 120000 all of this i bought with my own money 
back when I started, you know. So I have not been able to reimburse that money. So of course, I will not take everything from one brand, but your quality also matters because that also you can charge the brand for like a small percent. So you have to come up with a rate given all of these things in mind, your reach as well as your quality and as well as your effort and accordingly you can come up with a rate card. Now in general I don't do a lot of sponsorships or collaborations in general because I have a big list that I follow that I need to be able to try the product before I review it, I need to be able to try it for 2-3 to three weeks and not every brand agrees on all those terms. I am. I come with a lot of ethics and I have a whole like you know list that I need to follow so that's why I like having my manager only for me because she understands where I'm coming from she always tells the brand and lets them know that you know Sarah will be trying this for two weeks or three weeks and then giving her honest opinion about this if is that okay with you some brands are really generous they say yes that is exactly what we want and that's how we go about with it okay so in that case I majorly take a collaborations on YouTube now on YouTube there are like two types of collaborations there's like integrated one and a dedicated one so an integrated collaboration you will charge less from the brand because all they want is maybe 1.5 to 2 minutes of your video they don't want an entire video you can just integrate their product sponsorship in any one of the videos if I say thank you to this brand for sponsoring this part of today's video whenever I say this part of today's video that is because they've only integrated their sponsorship in that 1.5 to 2 minutes so you charge them much less like half or like three fourths of what you would charge a dedicated video a dedicated video is you whole and solely only talking about that brand and that product and that will have a separate charge altogether so you have to come up with your commercials like that you can of course come up with your dedicated one first and then just half it or three fourth it and come up with your integrated that's what I do so that's what I'm telling y'all and letting y'all know I think that's as transparent as I can get with y'all when the commercials are involved so I hope that helps you and now the next question somebody asked me is how much do I earn from each video now once again each video is not sponsored every single video on my channel is not sponsored I do maybe one or two sponsorships maximum at in one month nothing more than that because honestly with sponsorships it's a lot of deadlines to meet it's a lot of brands to cope up with it's a lot of work you know people who are doing a lot of sponsorships you shouldn't hate them you should respect them because it's so many deadlines to meet at the same time that I mean how do you keep up you know so for me with college it's not easy for me to keep up with every single brand so I do maximum one or two and in that case I am not earning of course from each video sponsorship wise but if I give you an eyeball idea about how much AdSense revenue generates which is very less you guys you all, you all think AdSense gives me a lot of money or just YouTubers a lot of money it's chindi matlab mera ek penti ka foundation bhi nahi aega how many times I've told you that? Okay, I'll give you an eyeball judgment. The most famous hyped video on my channel right now is the one I made about I'm not shopping on Nykaa anymore and that is my experience with uh, working with Nykaa TV. That video blew up and that video has a lot of like views and everything. Uh, whoever must have clicked or skipped ads. If you skip ads, we don't get any revenue. If you watch the ad completely, we get some percentage of it. And if you uh, click on the ad and go to that website, we get some percentage of it. So it works like that. From that video having, like I think it's crossed over 200k views. If I'm not wrong, it's close to that. And overall, I have generated about 2,500 to 2, 3,000 rupees from that video. That's about it. I'm giving you an, uh, like literal numbers. I think it's 3,000 if I'm not wrong. From 200k views, it is 3,000 rupees. And this is not the views I get on a daily basis. Daily basis, kya monthly bhi mere 200k views nahi hote hai. Like if you add up all my videos and all the views on all my videos also, it will not be that much money. So just imagine, you know, AdSense revenue, can't do it. Okay, the next question I have is by Rashmi and she framed her question so beautifully that I really wanted to like take a minute and address her and her question and that says please enlighten us upon as to what do you guys mean by sponsored but views being independent. This is said a lot, how do we trust this? Because if because if it is sponsored, where is the line where you inform us about a certain product and where you are just trying to influence us into buying it? So this is a very well framed question. That she means that uh, we and I often say this that this video is sponsored by so and so company but all of my thoughts and opinions are my own. If I say this and how do you know that I am genuinely honest or I'm just here to like you know make you buy it. Uh, so there are like two types of campaigns like I already said if that brand only wants to work with me my video and wants to integrate their product into one of my videos or wants me to do a dedicated video with them which is the kind of sponsorships I have only worked on 
then that kind of sponsorship is my one on one with the brand you know so it's not a mass campaign it does not involve many very many people so they will mostly not give me like a guideline to follow like okay say this this and this so all my thoughts and opinions will be my own but yes they have given me money to integrate their product in this video because if they don't it's just basically just marketing right if they don't do that how will you be able to find their product amongst the sea of products that is like flowing in the a uh, market at the moment so they need to market their product right but some brands do give you that leverage that you give your honest opinion and that is the that is when we mean that our views are our own but it is sponsored so it is not just us influencing you into buying it but now when it comes to mass campaigns which happen on a wider level like you will see every single youtuber uploading the same video at that particular time sare hi videos ek sath jayenge aur sabke channel pe you know sab ek hi jaise videos upload kar rahe that is when you know that this is a mass campaign and nothing wrong Wrong with that, but you should know that this is something that has been properly given by the brand. Now, I don't think every brand does that, but mostly they do give you like a list of guidelines to follow. That these 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 features about the product you have to mention in the video. So then that becomes like you know that is like more of a influencing thing and not a sponsorship. But views are our own thing. You can of course integrate your own views in between wherever, like give your own personal touch. but you also have to make sure that you mention everything by the brand because you have to keep both parties happy the brand as well as your audience and i don't think there is anything wrong with either ways you can uh, you should respect influencers who are doing both type of campaigns because i like i said you know a lot of brand deals take a lot of effort like to crack every single brand deal is difficult to be able to impress every single brand and your audience at the same time is difficult to be able to meet all the deadlines is very very difficult so the influencers who are doing a lot of brand deals are actually doing a lot of more work and especially those who do brand deals plus give you organic content unko to salam boss matlab you should respect those people like honestly i also make sure that i do both like i give you a balance of both organic and sponsored content and i think as a creator that is very important for me because first i'm a content creator and then i need to be able to market on my platform i don't want this to become television and just advertisements so i need to make sure that my content like my audience is enjoying my content but at the same time i'm not in complete loss because 3 years honestly speaking 3 years i have made zero money from youtube my adsense started monetizing and then stopped because they came up with new guidelines on youtube and then for an entire year there were no ads on my channel so they basically changed their guidelines so you needed like 10000 watch time or 1 lakh watch minutes or something overall on your channel and 1000 subscribers which i did not have and when i hit that also it took about a month for well, took about a year for them to review my channel and start monetizing my videos again so i have gone 2 years without any income whatsoever from youtube constantly putting out content constantly upgrading my content and buying makeup to review for your buying stuff and i still do you know so it's a lot of investment which in due course of time i think always deserves reimbursement so the next question i have is how i deal with brands that don't agree with my terms but they pay well i don't accept such collaborations because mostly uh, pehle to agreement uska hi hota hai ki what do they want from the video and what their product is so in case i'm not interested in that product in case i think it's not unique enough or it's not, like you know it's not really right up my alley or my audience will not enjoy it any of those things then i will not like take interest in the collaboration itself so paise tak to baat aati nahi hai pehle it's the collaboration then it's the money right so uh then i don't know how much they're going to pay me i just say no if it's not interesting to me okay the next question is actually about instagram and it asks the new instagram algorithm is it biased towards uh, influencers who have a bigger following now With Instagram now, you guys, the algorithm keeps on changing. So I am not the biggest fan as a creator of Instagram because, like, no matter how much content you create, uh, the algorithm is such that you know people can unfollow you anytime. There are so many fake follower businesses going on. Like, I get DMs every single day about buying followers for hundred rupees, two hundred rupees, likes for seventy five rupees. मतलब इतने सस्ते में if you can buy, of course people will buy. And in that case. the numbers play the game you know some brands don't really identify if you are fake following or if you are real following and all the fake following people start getting all of the traction and start getting all of the brand deals and 
we being the micro influencers just keep like getting pushed back but uh, in general yes instagram's algorithm is very effed up it keeps on changing it's not very constant and in that case the numbers can really demotivate you but i try not to focus on that i remind myself that i am not here for the numbers i don't really care about the numbers and even if i have 6000 people they are 6000 people they are genuine people they are not fake they are not bots and if i had them in real life in front of me i would go crazy so i'm very thankful even for the 6000 people i have The next question asks me an underrated or an overrated uh, company, a brand, basically. So uh, I think underrated is Dr. Shades. Definitely, their skincare is it's amazing. It's backed up with so much science. Is beautifully made. It has a lot of research backing it up. They have a lot of products at this point. They have a variety of products going on. And yes, I did not know about them until the brand reached out to me. So that's how underrated they are. I really think they can pick up their game in the next couple of years because. Uh, their products are genuinely, genuinely worth it. I think overrated brands at this point are yes, Mama Earth and Wow. We've all been seeing them. We've all been seeing the advertisements. Yes, they offer a lot of sponsorships, so they are a little overrated. I have tried Wow very many years back. Like I had their shampoo. I don't remember if I liked it or no because I was very young at that time and I didn't care much about the things I used on my hair. My sister wore it and I just used it, so I don't remember much. But Mama Earth, I recently tried and reviewed for you guys, and I mean their products are not. the worst it's not the worst skincare company i would say there is like definitely worst brands i've tried but it's also not the best company so it's a little overrated the next question is about the minimalist brand controversy and what do i think about it so a be minimalist is a brand that came up with their skincare range i think last week or something and they came up with their packaging and they reveal everything and everything looks awful lot similar to the ordinary now the ordinary is in the game since i think a long long time since before i became a creator so it's been there for a while their products are genuinely very good i do have their ordinary peeling solution and i at this point i have also placed an order for the order, uh, for the minimalist peeling solution because i want to compare them side by side and see if the minimalist is anything even close to the ordinary formulas because ordinary formulas are backed up with a lot of research and a lot of like lot of uh, scientists are on their team and everything now the thing with minimalist controversy is that definitely i am not supporting any company copying their packaging dot to dot literally packaging and formulation to the t from another company that could not have been an honest mistake honestly it was not an honest mistake i feel but they went on record they went on their instagram and they actually made a post and they explained what happened with the covid and the pandemic and their business and how they rushed up with the packaging and just launched anything and they took accountability for it and they also say that they will be making changes in the future so i am holding on to their word and any brand that takes accountability has my respect so i don't really want to speak much about the controversy i will try out the product for myself i'm tell you all what i feel about the product but apart from that I I don't think uh, there is anything to, you know, create controversy about the brand as of now since they've taken accountability. Next question is: Have I ever lied to get noticed by a brand? No, not really. Why would I lie to get noticed by a brand? Like, if I lie, will the brand notice me? No, I'm saying the truth also, and the brand is not noticing me. If I lie, they will not notice me. Alright, so the next question is: How I deal with negativity on the platform and hate coming to me? So. uh genuinely my audience is very like very very sweet and honestly the best audience ever i really love my sara squad a lot with all my heart you all are the people i come to when i'm upset i read my comments and i or genuinely feel so so much better about myself and my work in general so i don't receive a lot of hate but yes as your numbers grow people start hating on you and those who don't know you you know who are new to your channel who are new to your videos uh will leave a lot of hate i don't know from where it's coming what kind of frustration it is but Uh, in that case, I just keep like either it's like very bad if it's abuse in general. I will report spam and block that person from my channel. Or if it's like just a misunderstanding or an unsolicited advice or opinion, I do give my two is two cents and like tell them this is where I'm coming from. So mostly the air clears out if that person doesn't understand my point of view and gets very ugly in the comments. I will just delete that chain of comments altogether. Another thing that I wanted to mention about the negativity that is going around social media and YouTube at this point, I think is in the skincare community. Uh, like the last video I put up uh, was. about my skincare routine and i will be very honest with you all i was scared to put up that video i was so scared because i know 
that a lot of skincare I use might not be the perfect way a cosmetologist or a dermatologist would recommend doing it or it's not the most ideal way although I follow all the steps and I do the double cleanse and I do everything and I know my skincare really well and I'm a skincare enthusiast I do a lot of research before I put up my videos and I speak to you know people about like ingredients before I put up my video and like official people uh, so I know my stuff I know it but I know there are a lot of people who are now influenced by a lot of other youtubers and have been like leaving a lot of hate on this kind of content so even skincare routines I'm scared to put up but it's not even something viral or controversial that I'm putting up but I'm scared so it's because like I anticipated a lot of hate luckily I just got one or two comments uh, coming from that kind of category of people but what I need you all to understand if if you all can understand is that skincare is very very personal I understand from where those cosmetic formulators and all are coming it's years of research that they are backing up with their information which is spot on it's perfect I'm sure it's correct I'm not researched or well studied in that area but I'm also a medical student something I realized is that you need to stay in touch to be able to be the be the top person in the game you know so just like medicine is a study it's a field that never really ends it's something you have to keep doing and keep researching about keep in touch about keep practicing to be in touch with your subjects any of the creators you're seeing who are like scientists and stuff who've researched long back yes their information is correct but information on in science just keeps updating every single day so are they in touch with the new information is also a question you should ask you should start rationalizing all of this as well that are they really up to date with the newest information are they really up to date with their practice are they really completely qualified to say the things they are saying before you just take their words and start hating on other creators another thing that i have realized is that dermatologists are very very well educated in their field of study but yes sometimes they can also go wrong with your skin you guys i have got like you remember my face used to look like this and i had a face full of cystic acne i took this face and went to three dermatologists who only took me like you know they like one dermatologist only wanted me to keep doing cleanups like every time i went to him 2000 rupees was a cleanup session every single time i had to keep doing the cleanup i spent over 15 20000 doing the cleanups and nothing no avail every time my acne used to keep coming back he didn't even think about telling me that you know you need to get some tests done or need to get something done to check ki kyu bar bar aa raha he just kept telling me you have to clean your face you have to clean your face and kept doing that then high time I had spent so much money I switched my dermatologist and the next one I went to gave me 10,000 worth of products from her clinic only and because of course dermatologist so I trusted everything and brought it home used it so religiously for one and a half month nothing worked absolutely skin kept secreting more and more oils kept getting more oily kept getting like you know worse day by day so it was not getting better for me and then finally I went to one dermatologist his fees were so minimal he was like barely charging me anything but first thing he told me was you need to get your blood test done something is wrong with you internally that is causing this and the minute i got my test done i realized i have pcos that is why my skin is inflamed like this he gave me the correct medication literally in one month i was you know my skin was glowing and you guys were surprised like sara where did your acne go like you know i was with that face on the internet so you all were really really surprised so that is what I need to tell you all that every dermatologist is different and that is something I need you all to be sensitized about don't take one person's word and start hating on the other person is all I'm saying when those two dermatologists didn't work for me I did not go on Yelp or Google and leave horrible reviews about them or abuse them in any sort of way I just left it and I switched my doctor that is all I did so if you're not liking a content creator all you gotta do is leave that room and join another room which is you know floating your boat just don't leave hate for no reason is all all I need to say. The next question is the type of creators I cannot stand. Oh my god, the type of creators that create that viral content with you know, uh, ye hath me ye lagaya, and then dusse hath me ye lagaya, and my hand has become lighter in a matter of 20 days, and they just brighten one photo and decrease the brightness on the other, and they put up that as thumbnail, and those videos still get a lot of views. Yes, that's the kind of content I cannot stand and those are the kind of creators I cannot stand. Okay, another question is about any consequences that a barter deal might have. A barter deal, I feel, is not bad. It's not the worst thing to do. You can do a barter deal, but it should come with no, no, um, how do I say this, you know, no rules and regulations from the brand. So there are like an awful lot of times that the brands just want to send you the products and they're just like, Sarah, we want this, want you to try this for us. I'm like great you know send it over I give them my contact details and they will ship it over they ask for nothing they don't ask me review or say this or do this or put these hashtags or use this 
nothing absolutely just honest review and since mine is a review channel if i love it i will definitely review it for you all so that is just pr in general that kind of barter is completely fine but if they tell you send over products and be like ye 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 karna hai put this hashtag say this about the product the caption should be like this or the photo should be like this the video should be like this you need to insert demos you need to do this that this that ये सब के लिए भाई पैसे लगते हैं ऐसी फ्री में काम मत किया करो मतलब इसके लिए यू कैन नॉट एक्सेप्ट अ बैटर डील इट इज नॉट डन एंड ऑनेस्टली आई फील वी आर एट अ पॉइंट वे इफ एवरी क्रिएटर स्टार्ट टेकिंग अ स्टैंड दैट यू नो बैटर डील्स आर जस्ट रॉन्ग एंड आई एम सीइंग दिस फ्रॉम अ पॉइंट दैट आई डोंट कम हियर फॉर मनी ओके दिस इज नॉट माय फर्स्ट जॉब आई डोंट कम हियर फॉर मनी बट स्टिल आई एम सीइंग दिस दैट द थिंग इज नाउ इफ पीपल लाइक मी हु से दैट आई एम नॉट हियर फॉर मनी मुझे पैसा नहीं चाहिए तो आई विल एक्सेप्ट बैटर डील्स फ्रॉम दीज कंपनीज these companies will think that agar ye mujhe itna acha quality ka content barter mein de rahi hai then why do they go to creators who are taking money right so those creators ka it's full time income they are paying their rent they are eating their food they are do, running their household with that money so i can, me doing that is actually robbing somebody else of a job so i that way it's ethically wrong to do that so that's why every creator i think should stand in unity and be like no barter deal so every brand should pay its due for marketing to every influencer trust me you guys influencer marketing is so much cheaper for brands as compared to putting advertisements on even instagram promoting your video or photo on instagram takes a lot of money the question is how much time does it take to grow now it took me a while to grow it took me very long I I'm still not completely blossomed into a full blown sunflower. I'm still like very much in my bud. So it takes time, yar. बहुत time लगता है, बहुत मेहनत लगती है. Keep putting out a lot of quality content, a lot of quantity of content as well. Use the correct hashtags. Stay consistent because what that does is it increases your reach. You know, you the people watching the similar kind of videos will start seeing a lot more of your face, and someday they will click on your video and see, भाई कौन है ये मतलब. So then that is how they'll get engaged with your content, and if they like it, they will hit subscribe. So that's how you engage your audience in your content, and it takes a while to grow. Uh, especially since I used to only upload one video a week, I was not very engaging. I was not very consistent. So it's taken me a while. The next question I have is, do you think talking in Hindi gets more subscribers? Now this is something I have personally debated upon because for me Hindi doesn't come very naturally. मतलब when I'm expressing and all now वो आ जाता है but uh it's not like i can flow have uh, like i can't have conversations in flow in hindi it's not my thing i speak in english even at home my dadi learned english because we used to only speak in english at home so it's like that's how i'm brought up so it doesn't come naturally to me but i do see that a lot of um, hindi speaking youtubers do get a lot of subscribers much quicker than the ones who speak in english in india because i realize that North Indian community speaks a lot in Hindi at home, so it is something they familiarize themselves with better. But what I've realized is even if I do one or two videos in Hindi on my channel, my subscribers don't like it. They comment down below saying, "Please speak in English so we understand." So I have realized over the years that my subscriber base is more South Indian, so they are more English speaking. So that kind of has been my community now, and I'm more comfortable even I'm South Indian from some heritage, so I'm also more comfortable in English. So yeah, even if that is true on some level in India, I don't think I will resort to speaking. I do like to do one or two videos, maybe you know, in couple of months to do in Hindi, so I can um, engage with a wider audience. I think overall, as a creator, I'm happy with my English, and yeah, that's what I'm going to stick to. The next question I have, I think I'm going to like that's going to be the second last question because it's been a long video. Is did Nike ever clear the air? Now I went on record to make a video about why I will not be working or shopping from Nike anymore. and that is because of my experience that i had working with nike tv and it was not a very pleasant experience it was probably my only brand experience which was sar and bra like bad uh, because i've never really had a bad experience working with any brand anyway the brands i work with are super super sweet and sometimes so adorable that i feel like i wish they had more products i could work for you know with them so uh, yeah no they did not come forward and clear the air i don't think they ever will and uh, yeah that's that that they did And I think the last question I'm going to take for today is: Have I ever promoted a product I did not like? No, absolutely not. I have said this time and time again that since I'm not here for money, that doesn't mean I will not do things for free. But I will also not do things uh, or deals with brands or products that I do not genuinely like. If they give me the time to try it out, or if I have already tried it in the past and I know that I like this. Why not? I would love to be sponsored for products that I like and I anyway share with you all. And so yeah, those if those brands want to work with me, I would have a pleasure working with them. But never, never done one for products I don't like or don't use in my regular life. 
And with that, we complete this very super, super honest YouTuber tag. I had a lot of fun, honestly. Like, I would love to do like a part two. I would love to do this sometime later. Maybe we should do this like once a year to just update you all about what is going on. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. I kept it very positive, very factual. Like, all of these are real facts, and I hope it helped you all as well. If you all were new creators, you all got a lot of insight. Even if you all are consumers and viewers, you all got insight into how things work behind the scenes. So, if you all like this video, please don't. Don't forget to hit the like button also leave a comment down below letting me know which other videos you all want to do because you guys are running out of content ideas also don't forget to share my channel with your other friends and family so we can make the sara squad even larger come on you guys 50k this is giveaway coming at 50k who wants a giveaway never done one but i'm so excited to do one so come on let's get to 50k shall we for today's video the sara squad shout out goes to adishree deore thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel If you want to be a part of next video Sara Squad shout out then all you have to do is hit the subscribe button the bell icon right next to it and also leave a comment down below saying hashtag #sara squad and you'll get a chance to be a part of my next video Sara Squad shout out I will see you guys very soon in another video bye guys stay home stay safe and take care love you mm.